So in chapter 2, section 2.1, there is quite a bit of material which will be familiar from pre-A-level courses. There might be a bit of new notation and a bit of new nomenclature as well. So first of all, measures of uh, location and measures of spread is what we're going to be talking about here. And first of all, we're talking about measures of central tendency. Now, let's just stop for a bit and talk about what we mean by location, what we mean by uh, spread, and then we'll come back to here. And it's uh, you, you can see already that we're talking about mean, median, and mode, right? So we're talking about averages. But let's just stop and think about what we mean. Um, if you're picturing a set of data, so try and picture a set of data. In my head, what that looks like is we've got a number line, and if I just put a little mark every time one of the numbers is, uh, you know, one of the, where, where each piece of data is. So, you know, I'm, I'm picturing a load of numbers on the number line. So maybe you, you, you picture it as a number line and each, each uh, data point is kind of lit up with a little LED light or something like that. So what we want to do is we want a few numbers which give us an idea of what that looks like on the number line. OK, we can't... Uh, have a, if we've got a whole table of numbers, it's not going to be very clear in our heads what that whole lot's going to look like, what the pattern is. The whole point of data processing, uh, data analysis, and data display is that we take a whole bunch of data and we present it in some way which is easy to interpret. So if we just have a list of numbers, no good. Our brains are wired so that they don't process that very well. If we have a load of points on a number line, that would be an example of data display, wouldn't it? That could, that could be one thing to do. It's not a particularly uh, easy bit of data display to put together, and maybe it's a sort of long, thin, weird one, and what happens if you've got lots of lights bunched up? So we don't tend to do it that way, but we, we could take those things and, and draw the same information on a bar chart or a pie chart if we wanted to give a visual representation of it. But that's the, the sort of mental picture that I conjure up every time I think of a set of data. I think of a load of numbers, and they're because they're numbers, they are points on the number line, right? So what if we don't want to display that with a diagram? What if we want to analyze that and do some arithmetic with it, do some maths with it, and use, uh, the, use a few numbers to represent this whole set of data? Because then we might be able to do something with it. So things like find the mean, find the mode, that kind of thing, okay? Well, what bits of information would be useful? Well, the first thing is, I've just drawn a number line there, I've put a load of data points on it. Where is this? Where, where on the number line? Is it near 100? Is it near a million? Is it near 0 0.2? Where are these numbers? And then secondly, how spread out are they? So there's my smallest bit of data, there's my largest bit of data. So, But how big a gap is this? So first of all, where are we? And secondly, how big is this gap? So is, is, is this, the middle of this about zero, and this gap is 5,000? Or is the middle of this... 20 and the, this gap here is um, from here to here might be just a distance of four, I don't know. So when I have that mental picture of a bunch of LED lights on a line as a set of data, what I'm going to need to know to get a better handle on that, or one way of getting a better handle on that quite quickly is to just have two numbers. One, which is a measure of how spread out that, that data is. Um, so what, you know, what, and the easiest measure of that is the one I've just described there, the range from the smallest to the biggest, but there are other measures of spread as well. And then I need a measure of location, so whereabouts should I be looking? So if I gave you two numbers, like the, 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 my measure of location is 100 and my measure of spread is 10, then I'm kind of thinking this is, you know, maybe from 95 to 105, centred on around 100. I've got a better idea of the sort of numbers I'm looking for. Whereas if I told you that this was 10, and the spread was 0 0.2, then this goes maybe between 9.9 uh, .9 and 10.1, something like that. And I, again, I've got a very different picture of the sort of data that I'm looking at. Um, so you need some other information as well. I can't just tell you I've got a set of data with a, uh, a central tendency or an average of 10 and a spread of 0 0.2. I'm going to have to tell you things like, if I want a, a bit better mental picture of this, um, N, how many data points have I got? What's, what's my n value? So if I tell you I've got 100 pieces of data with an average of 10 and a spread of 0 0.2, then you get a certain picture in your head. If I tell you I've got five bits of data with an uh, average of 10 and a spread of 0 0.2, you get a different picture in your head. So the whole point is to take a, a whole set of data and try and come up with a few values which will let us get a handle on that bit of data and that we can, uh, we can do the maths with. Um, so what values are important, what is important about that whole data so we, we can uh, 
we can manipulate it and we can compare that set of data to other sets of data. You could say, well, every piece of data is important. Everything matters. If I'm measuring uh, people's exam performance, for instance, it's everybody's important. It matters how well everybody's done at maths. And that's true. But if I'm trying to do something statistical, like find out are exam results going up or down, I'm not particularly interested in individual results. I'm interested in average results. What's the trend of the data overall? Um, so it's not to say that individual things aren't important. It depends on the sort of question we're asking. If we're asking statistical questions, then we need to represent our full set data sets in a lot of time, in a lot of cases, a lot of situations, we need to represent our full data set with a few numbers. Um, and the numbers we tend to use are the mode, median, mean um, for our measure of central tendency. So the idea of the mode, median, and mean is that they should be, so we talked about a measure of location and measure of spread. Well, the mean, median, mode should be in the center of the set of data. That's the idea. They shouldn't be over to one side. Um, now, you may have seen examples like this one, where let's say we have um, somebody who owns a factory who, or a, a business of some sort who is getting £100 a day and they are paying uh, somebody £2 a day and then they've got three other people who are getting paid £1 a day. Now, if we work this out, what's the mean of those five numbers? Well, it's 100, 102, 103, 104, 105, so it's 105 pounds. So the mean is 105 divided by five, which is 21. So the mean of this set of data is 21 pounds. So the point of this example is to say, mean, median, and mode are designed to be a good measure of average. The average of this bit of data, if you take an average as meaning a representative or a typical or an expected value from that set of data, 21 pounds isn't a very good average here, is it? But it is the correct mean. So the way I like to think about it is, the mean, the median, and the mode are descriptions of uh, mathematical algorithms, a set of instructions, mathematical instructions, that says this is what you do, these are the calculations you do, this is the process you follow with the data. When you follow that process, you get a number. That number is supposed to be a measure of average, a measure of central tendency. We can pick examples where, in this case, the mean doesn't give a good measure of average. So in that case, um, we'd want to use the median or we'd want to use the mode for this set of data to give us a good average, okay? Um, and the, 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 another way of saying this is that the, the mean is affected by extreme values. If you've got outliers, they skew the mean one way or the other. Uh, so always worth watching out for. So <clears throat> we've got mean, median and mode. They are designed as measures of central tendency. We expect them to be somewhere in the middle of the data. Um, unless we've got some pretty strange data. Um, and we find, we, we, we've seen before finding mean, I hope we've seen before finding mean from a frequency table, finding modal class and um, medians from frequency tables and that sort of thing. So I'm not gonna go through that lot. Um, if you need a revision of it, then it's worth having a look through a GCSE revision guide, something like that. A couple of things just to remind you of or, or tell you, first of all, that symbol there means it is a sigma and it means the total of. So if I say sigma x, little x is the letter I use to represent the data. So sigma x means take all the things that I'm calling x, that's each piece of data, and sigma means add them all up. So add up each piece of data. All, for all the pieces of data, that's sigma x. In other words, that's the total of all the data. N is the letter I usually use for how many pieces of data I have. So sigma x divided by n is add up all the data, divide by how many pieces of data there are. In other words, that's our mean, isn't it? And the notation for mean, a new notation for mean is x bar, okay? So the pieces of data are a little x, and x with a bar over the top, pronounced x bar, um, is another way of saying the mean. In other words, sigma x divided by n, total of all the x data divided by n, and we should be familiar with this one as well, sigma x times f divided by sigma f. If you've got a frequency table, total of the f times x column divided by total of the f column, okay? Um, and there are advantages and disadvantages in mean and medium mode, and all of those are quite nicely covered in the textbook, so have a read through. I'm not going to repeat that stuff here. Um, except one quick thing would be to say the mode um, is the class or value that occurs most often. So another way of thinking about it is that 
when you see mode, you're thinking highest frequency. Okay, so the, 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 the category with the highest frequency, that's your mode. When you see median, you're thinking the middle value. So you're thinking half above and half below. That's the whole idea of the median. Half the data is above and half the data is below the median. 